so you are Rick Griffin, creator of House Pets Comic. So to start off, can you tell me a bit about yourself and your comic? Well, hi, I'm Rick Griffin, creator of House Pets Comic. <laughs> I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you want me to say? House Pets is a comic that I've been making for the past 10 years, and it's been driving me crazy. Um, the the premise the premise behind house pets is just basically me going well what if garfield except you know that the people can understand the animals back in 2008 did you already have a lot of it planned or does most of it just come along the way or um i didn't plan nearly as much as i probably should have uh the so most of it is most of it is really just uh, me making stuff up as I go along and saying, hey, you know what would be cool is if I did this, and then I do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say are some of the more important aspects uh, to focus on when working on like huge projects like this? And when working on a huge project, the most important thing to focus on is getting things done one step at a time. If you try and think about the entire project at once, you're just going to drive yourself crazy and never going to be satisfied. Just focus on what's next, the very next thing that's in front of you. I think that's pretty good advice. <laughs> you have been like uploading every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, so it's. I think it has been very consistent uh, what's your reasoning b behind uploading on these specific days no well, that was just a convenient time to do it i just thought you know i can do this maybe three times a week so monday wednesday and friday was the is been the standard go to three days a week for most web comics so that's just what i went with yeah it's pretty cool too because like when reading it it's you you always know that there's gonna be updates and that's nice to know when you're a reader kind of yeah i i think consistency is extremely important when it comes to doing something like a web comic is because especially if especially if you want an audience uh, the audience has to expect things regularly or at least as regularly as you can get them <laughs> because yeah. that's what an audience appreciates is things coming and they can expect them and that and that also gets them excited before it comes out so you've not only pleased them with a new comic you've pleased them by making them excited for the new comic <laughs> <laughs> yeah how would you say your workflow goes well first i have to write the comic early on when i was making house pets I didn't always write the comic before I started making it, and that's a, that's a big mistake. Uh, you should probably know where you're going before you actually start on it. Like, no, no matter how badly you need to get the comic out quickly, uh, you need to actually finish writing the thing before you start making the thing. Otherwise, you run into the occasional problem of having to throw out absolutely everything you've been working on for the last five hours. <laughs> okay, that was in 2009, so I wasn't working five hours per comic strip. That was maybe three hours at most, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you say have been very difficult parts about working on it? Writing is always the hard part, I think. <laughs> I, you, you can draw... When you draw, you can just draw whatever you want. I mean, the drawing part just... I, I, I get obsessed about my artwork from time to time, and I'm like, I need to do this better. But uh, that's actually pretty easy to do with art compared to with writing. It's har much harder with writing to say, I need to do my writing better, and then do something that's actually objectively better than what you've done, because how do you evaluate that? That's a bunch of words. You don't necessarily know that what you're looking at is better than the stuff that you did earlier when it comes to writing. <laughs> yeah, I can kind of recognize that as well. Like when I'm writing videos, I kind of hate writing them because I don't know where I'm actually going. But when I 
already written it down, it's way easier to actually make it because you know what you're supp supposed to do, kind of, at least. Yes, one, once the script, that's a very, it's a very important thing that once the script is done, even if it's a terrible script, at least you have a script and you know yeah. how you're going to make the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think, like, about your past work compared to the work you do now? Is there, like, anything? Uh, I don't know. I, I know a lot of artists and such really, really hate their past work. And I wouldn't necessarily put up my past work in my por portfolio, especially from, like, 10 years ago. But um, I'm actually usually at peace with my past work. <laughs> I, I am okay with people enjoying my past work. I don't think I need to rip it from their eyes or anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I've been. I read. Uh, I read the entire comic the past two days because I was like, "Oh shit!" It's like years since I've actually read it, so I need to catch up. And it's the past stuff is kind of good sometimes. <laughs> is the story coming to an end? The house pets comic or? Will that continue on for quite a while? Uh, it's eventually going to come to an end. I don't know exactly how it's going to end, but I just know that I don't think I can keep doing this forever, especially when I have a zillion other projects. But I also still have a bunch of stories that I kind of need to tell in the house pets world, so it's not ending yet. <laughs> Do you have any advice to give someone who would really like to make their own comic? Like, if... what? Like, if I wanted to create a comic, how should I go about creating my comic? Well, the first advice I always give people who say, I want to do a creative thing, is that I say, okay, do that creative thing. Just do it. It doesn't matter if you have any idea what you're doing. Just tr start trying it. And uh, you will learn very quickly if you just throw yourself into the deep end of the pool. Uh, as for general advice in making comics, you kind of need to read comics, at least some comics, <laughs> because uh, I, if somebody doesn't actually know how the language of comics works, there's a bunch of little things everywhere that uh, they don't necessarily know that they're messing up, and they're definitely messing up. I'm like currently working on a little tutorial comic about the actual uh, word balloon order, because that is the number one thing that I see that people mess up <laughs> on amateur comics. Has there been moments where, where you have been like very demotivated about creating this stuff? Oh, it's especially like when I'm in the middle. Like when I say that uh, you need to have a script before you're finished, I still don't always finish the entire arc I, I I try to finish I finish the script before I start working on the comic itself. But I haven't necessarily always gotten all the way to the end of the arc and then rewrote it again and then rewrote it again like I should. So I generally have half an arc and an outline for where it goes after that. And then I get to that halfway point and then I'm like it doesn't actually make sense to keep going <laughs> any further with the outline that I have. So I have to throw that outline away and start over from the middle of an arc that I've already drawn and written. And that's very demotivating. <laughs> yeah. That And that's like the downside to being incredibly regular with your comic. Uh, I would say that if you already have, if you have a story in mind, try to write the entire thing first. <laughs> Like, not not just each comic. That That's, like, the starting point. Like, start at trying to finish a comic. But once you're writing several pages worth of material, you also need to write to the end of that several pages worth of material. What have some of your inspirations been when creating it and stuff? Well, that's hard to say. I mean, when I was first creating it, I was always basing it off of my appreciation of uh, newspaper comic strips in the U.S. Because there's always been, like, little bits of Garfield in there. Old Garfield back when he was funny. 
Um, it was uh, Bloom County back when that was funny. Um, it was Calvin and Hobbes, which ended before it stopped being funny. Uh, <laughs> there, like there's it was just a bunch of newspaper comic strips because that's a lot of what I read when I was growing up was collections of those. But it sort of like explodes into its own thing. It exploded into its own thing, and I don't even necessarily know where I'm pulling inspiration from moment to moment, other than I have probably a lot of inspiration sources, like especially through the furry fandom. Um, I watch like ten gazillion artists, and I always want to pull little ideas that I see from them absolutely everywhere. How long have you been a furry, by the way? I need to know. It's very important. That depends on when you start reckoning. I mean, I was probably officially furry by 2004. So you've been a furry, like, since you started the comic, kind of? Mm, definitely before, since I started the comic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when I've been, like, reading... Uh, especially in the beginning, I, I saw like there's a lot of stuff that you can exchange uh, with furries basically, and it's and it's always like I don't know if uh, I'm like projecting furry into it myself or or if that's like you back then. No, that's that's know. definitely me. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm pretty furry, so. <laughs> I I guess I don't think I have much more to ask about. I'm gonna take a look at my notes. And check if my notes have something they want to say. Okay. No, I think that was everything, actually. Uh, so, uh, thank you for uh, answering, I guess. <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, have a good day, yes. Okay, thank you. You, you have a good day, too. <laughs>